Introduction. Hey, Pooja Didi, you are here. I want your little help in my biology project. Can you help me, please? Yeah, sure, Raman. But before that, let me sow these seeds in the soil. But why are you sowing these seeds? It's simple, Aman. When seeds will germinate in the soil, a new plant will grow up. Hmm, that's interesting. Do all plants grow due to seeds? No, Aman. There are various methods by which plants reproduce. You mean to say that, like the animals, plants also reproduce? Yes, Aman. Hmm, this has created an interest in me to learn about the reproduction in plants. Come, children. Let us learn about reproduction in plants. Objectives At the end of this lesson you will be able to Define reproduction Recall the parts of a flower Explain asexual and sexual reproduction in plants Describe asexual modes of reproduction in plants such as vegetative propagation, budding, fragmentation and spore formation. Define unisexual and bisexual flowers. Understand pollination and its types. Explain formation of a zygote. Discuss seed dispersal in plants. What is reproduction? The process of producing young ones from their parents is called reproduction. Most plants have roots, stems and leaves. These are called the vegetative parts of a plant. Flowers are the reproductive parts of a plant. But before studying the reproduction in plants, let's recall the parts of a flower. Parts of flower. Flowers are the beautiful parts of a plant. They are important in making seeds. Therefore, they are the reproductive parts of a plant. Let's learn about their parts. Stamen is the male part of a flower and pistil is the female part of the flower. The stamen has two parts, anther and filament. The anther is generally yellow in color and carries the pollen. It is held up by a thread-like part called a filament. The pistil has three parts, stigma, style and ovary. The stigma is the sticky surface on the top of the pistil. It traps and holds the pollen. The style is the tube-like structure that holds up the stigma and the ovary contains the ovules. Other important parts of the flower are the petals and sepals. Petal is the colored part of a flower. The sepals are the green petal-like parts at the base of the flower. Receptacle is the part of a flower stalk where the parts of the flower are attached. Self-assessment. Drag and drop the correct labels into their respective places. Types of Reproduction Reproduction in plants can be achieved through two ways, namely asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, only single parent is involved, whereas in sexual reproduction, both the parents are involved. Let's study about them in detail. Vegetative Propagation Different methods of asexual reproduction are Vegetative Propagation budding, fragmentation and spore formation. Let's discuss about them in detail one by one. When new plants are produced from the vegetative parts of a plant, the process is called vegetative propagation. It does not involve formation of seeds. Let us see how vegetative propagation works. Stem as a vegetative part of a plant. Have you ever seen buds at the nodes of the stem? These buds are called axillary buds. These buds do not produce flower, rather they give rise to new branches. In some plants like rose, small portions of the stem containing small nodes are cut from the plant. These cut portions are called cuttings. These cuttings, if planted and watered, can produce new rose plants. Similarly, Stem cuttings of sugarcane can also be used for vegetative propagation of sugarcane. Do you know potato is the edible stem of a plant? It bears small scars on it called eyes. Well, these are the axillary buds. 
Each eye on a potato can give rise to new plants by forming shoot above and root below. Leaf as a vegetative part of a plant. In plants like Bryophyllum, leaf is the vegetative structure that helps in vegetative propagation of a plant. Many small buds arising at the margins of the leaves under suitable conditions form new plants. Budding. Children, have you heard about yeast? It is a single-celled organism which can be seen only under microscope. Let us see how they grow and multiply. Take a pinch of yeast powder and place it in a beaker with some water. Add some sugar and swirl to dissolve it. After an hour or so, put a drop of this liquid on a wash glass and observe under a microscope. You will observe new yeast cells formed. The small bulb-like projection you see coming out of the yeast cell is called a bud. These buds grow, mature and form new yeast cells. Fragmentation Have you ever noticed green-colored patches in a pond? These are algae. Algae reproduce asexually by fragmentation. Mature algae breaks up into smaller fragments and these fragments grow into individuals. Fragmentation is the process of breaking of a mature organism into two or more fragments. Spore formation. What happens if we keep a piece of bread in warm conditions for a few days? Yes, we will notice blue-green fungus grown on it. Fungus grows from spores present in the air. Spores are light in weight, so they keep floating in the air. Under suitable conditions, they germinate and develop into new individuals. Plants such as moss and ferns also reproduce by means of spore formation. Self-assessment Let's check what you have learned so far. Drag and drop the correct option into its respective place. Unisexual and bisexual flowers Corn, papaya and cucumber flowers have either the stamens or the pistil. These types of flowers are called unisexual flowers. On the other hand, hibiscus and mustard flowers contain both stamens and pistil. These types of flowers are called bisexual flowers. Anther of a flower contains pollen grains which produce male gametes. The female gamete is formed in an ovule. In sexual reproduction, both male and female gametes fuse together to form a zygote. Pollination You must have seen honeybees sitting on a flower. Do you know insects carry away pollen grains on their bodies? They are the pollinating agents. The transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or the stigma of another flower on the same plant is called self-pollination. Whereas the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same type is known as cross-pollination. Fertilization When male and female gametes are fused together, a new cell is produced which is called a zygote. This process is called fertilization. After fertilization, ovary changes into fruit and the ovules develop into seeds. The seed contains an embryo enclosed in a protective seed coat. Fruit may be either fleshy or hard. Seed dispersal. We know that plants cannot move from one place to another. Have you ever thought how same kinds of plants are grown at different places? This happens because seeds are dispersed to different places. Some get blown off with the wind to far off places. Some seeds are carried away by water while some get dispersed by insects or animals. When the seeds reach the soil, they germinate into a new plant. In fact, some seeds are also dispersed when the fruit bursts with sudden jerks. Seed dispersal is very important because it prevents competition between the plant and its own seedlings for sunlight, water and minerals. It also enables the plants to explore their new habitats. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. The process of producing young ones from their parents is called reproduction. 
flowers the reproductive part of a plant. In plants, there are two modes of reproduction, asexual and sexual. Asexual reproduction involves only one parent, whereas sexual reproduction involves two parents. There are different methods of asexual reproduction such as vegetative propagation, budding, fragmentation and spore formation. In vegetative propagation, new plants are produced from the vegetative parts of a plant such as root, stem and leaves. A unisexual flower has either the stamens or the pistil. A bisexual flower has both stamens and the pistil. The male gametes are found inside the pollen grains and the female gametes are found inside the ovule. The transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called pollination. Pollination is of two types, self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or to the stigma of another flower on the same plant. In cross-pollination, pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same type. The fusion of male and female gametes is called fertilization. Fertilized egg is called zygote, which develops into an embryo. After fertilization, ovary changes into fruit and ovules develop into seeds. Seed dispersal is caused by wind, water, insects and other animals.